Coming to you from DevNexus 2020, I'm Bob Rubart with the Oracle Groundbreakers team, and I'm here with Venkat Subramaniam. How are you this morning? Very good, Bob. Thanks for having me here. You are a busy man, so I appreciate the time. You are a Java champion. You are an Oracle Groundbreaker ambassador. Uh, when you're not collecting those accolades, what do you do with your time? <laughs> well, um, I, I love talking, as, as you kind of know. So I speak in a lot of different conferences. I teach courses. I do consulting mentoring. And then in the spare time, write some books and uh, do mountain hiking. Spare time. <laughs> <laughs> so are you presenting at this event? Yes, uh, I'm giving two talks, uh, both related to Java. Uh, one is on uh, just a special area of uh, collectors, uh, which is a uh, fancy uh, utility class in the JDK. And uh, in my opinion, somewhat underutilized. So I spend uh, an hour on talking about collectors. I'm also fascinated about uh, where Java has been heading for the past few years. So my talk is on, I, I called it, uh, this ain't your parents uh, Java. And, and so the idea is to say how Java has changed the last few years and how Java is changing rapidly in the next few years for the better. Now obviously this is a special year because coming up in May is Java's 25th anniversary. Tell me about where, where Venkat's career and Java intersect. <laughs> well, um, I started my career as a programmer with uh, C++. Actually, to be honest, I started with Visual Basic. Okay. Things can only get better after that. And uh, I, I did a lot of, lot of time on uh, both programming and teaching C++. And then when Java came out, I got really excited about Java, so picked up Java fairly uh, along the way as soon as it came out. Uh, it's kind of hard to believe that I've been using Java for you know, good most of 25 years now, and uh, started uh, you know teaching Java, using Java early on, uh, and then uh, got really excited about other programming languages. So I program in about 15 different languages uh, over the years, but definitely a lot of different languages on the JVM as well. So it's been uh, quite a long journey. Where do you think, now you mentioned that your, your session talks about where Java might go. But where could that take us? You know, it strikes me that there's been so much innovation and technological advancement over the last 25 years, it's hard not to imagine that Java wasn't a big part of that. Yeah, so, so one of the beautiful things about uh, the, the recent development of Java, and I'm really happy for this, is the, is the core developers behind Java are not interested in changing Java for the sake of changing it. They, they are really aware of two very specific things. One is, if the language doesn't evolve, it becomes irrelevant. So there's a there's this tension to evolve the language. At the same time, Java doesn't have the, so to use the word, luxury that a lot of other languages have because Java is a language that's used by a lot of people. So when you have a language which is used by 10 million people, you can't change it recklessly. Um, and I'm not saying this out of disrespect of other languages, I'm not saying they are reckless, but the problem is, are, are the ability of these other languages is to innovate, put out some things, and they have a very passionate but small group of developers who embrace it, try it, and if it works, that's great. If not, they say, eh, this is not working, let's change it, and they're able to ch make changes to it. Java doesn't have that luxury. Mm -hmm. In the case of Java, you want to deliver something that's pretty solid, pretty concrete. And when people uh, uh, you know, use it, you want to make sure it works really well. So part of the tension is the language has to change, but part of the tension is it's got to change in a really good way that you don't have the ability to say, oops, we did that and we want to back out of it. So what the developers behind Java are doing is something I think is very uh, you know, pragmatic and, and practical, and that is to learn from these other languages. See what innovation has happened in those languages. That is not to say that Java is not innovating, but to me, Java is innovating not language features, but Java is innovating the implementation of the language features. Mm. This is where I have the deepest respect for Lambdas, for example. I'll be honest about it. When I looked at Lambdas initially, I said, eh, I don't care about it. I've seen Lambdas in a lot of other languages. Why do I care? But what drew me to Java's Lambda is not the fact that Lambdas are in Java because Lambdas have been around in languages for a long time. But the way that Lambdas were implemented in Java was fascinating. On one hand is the invoke dynamic, on the other hand is how 
you can use it as a functional interface, and as a result, you're able to use backward compatibility. I mean, this is one distinction between C Sharp and Java, is in the way of C Sharp is the new way versus the old way. In the case of Java, you could take Lambdas and pass it to API written 15, 20 years ago, and that's pretty amazing. And, and that is exactly what they are doing now to the future of Java, is every feature they are considering, is it feasible? And if it's feasible, how can it be brought in in a way that programmers can leverage those with existing code? Well, Java has legacy. There's a lot of legacy code out there in Java. And, and, and the best way to really move Java forward is to take the legacy with it. And, and that is exactly what these, these developers behind Java are doing. Mm. And, and I have the deepest respect for that. Uh, it, it's not an easy problem to solve, right? Mm. We, we can throw some code together very quickly. Any fool can do it. But in a way to be able to develop in a way that it's backward compatible, it is valuable, it performs really well, and it meets all the other constraints is, is just absolutely phenomenal. And, and Java is moving in a really reasonable pace and I'm, I'm all excited, uh, that's the reason uh, that I think it's in the right direction. Now, in addition to speaking at conferences, you are deeply involved in organizing another conference that's going to take place about 2,000 miles west of here and in four or five weeks. Tell me about that. Well, one of the things that's been in my mind is, I've been speaking in conferences for about 20 years now. Uh, and I'm like looking at you know a, a developer who has gone through the journey, and I look back and I'm like, wow, what was it to be speaking at a first conference when I spoke? And, and I see a lot of young developers today who are as good and even better than me uh, as I was, but what if we can nurture them? And what if we can bring experienced veteran speakers and, and you know, mingle them with new speakers? How would it become a good experience for those speakers to grow in, you know, in the leadership of experienced speakers. And then of course, when young minds have really bright ideas and the veteran speakers have bright ideas, how would it be to learn from that experience? So in other words, I really wanted to come up with a, a diversified conference where there are people with a different age, different gender, different thoughts, different languages. So it's not a language conference, it's not a microservices conference, it's everything put together. Yeah. So we pretty much opened up and said, here's a broad spectrum of areas, let's go invite speakers to present. And I'm, I'm absolutely humbled and, and thankful, we got 468 proposals. It was a challenge for the program committee, the program committee was completely independent body, and they went through every single proposal, evaluated it, and then we picked out of that a good 153 proposals for presentation in the conference. So absolutely, you know, great, great number of people, 100 speakers in the conference. So I'm absolutely excited. So it's going to happen in uh, uh, near uh, Boulder, Colorado, Denver, Colorado, and and I couldn't be happier. It's it's just absolutely, uh, you know, blessed to have such amazing speakers and attendees who are going to be there as well. And what is the name of this conference? Oh, sorry, it's de Dev Dot Next. Uh, Dev.next is the conference. So to say that as a developer, we should be looking at what's next and you know, next could be you know, getting better in what we do, but learning new technologies as well. So it's always looking out to the future. Well, Venkat, thank you for taking time to talk to me. Uh, it's always fun to talk to you. And obviously, folks, I think, is registration open for Dev.next? Yes, it is. And it's been uh, a, a good uh, registration for about a few months now. And we got about another two or three weeks uh, of registration open. Okay, so you've got time to register for that conference and book your air travel and all that jazz, so make sure you do that. Again, Venkat, thank you so much. For the Oracle Groundbreakers team, I'm Bob Rubart. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned. Stay tuned.